What's up you guys, this is Danny from the Engine Base, and today we are installing the rear rotors and brake pads on Marley's 2014 Camaro. So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta break the lugs off the wheel so that we can take the wheels off the car. But Marley out here trying to make me look like a fool and didn't tell me that her car, that her wheels had lug locks on it. So I was trying to find the right socket, but none of them fit. No wonder, because I needed the wheel lock. So we broke all the lugs. Next step is gonna to be to lift up the car on a jack and we're gonna remove the rest of the lugs and remove the wheel. Some meat. <laughs> oh damn, I left my handprint on that. <laughs> so, we're gonna be removing that bolt there. The camera's not focusing. Let me see if I can, there we go. So that bolt there, and then it's got a counterpart somewhere up here at the top. By removing those two bolts, we'll be able to remove the entire caliper completely versus just separating it into two. By doing it completely, I can replace the pads from the bottom and also get it off so that I can then move on to the rotor. So as I remove these bolts here, the caliper is getting ready to come off. And if you'll notice, there's a bucket right here with me. The bucket is to support the caliper just like that oh ow with the caliper removed now we can go ahead and tackle the rotor the rotor is super easy it's one security bit that normally comes as a torx head we just undo it and the rotor should just pop right off in a perfect world so i got the security bolt removed now the next step is going to be that the rotor can just pop right off but this is a rear wheel drive car, and that means that the handbrake is set to the rear rotor. So you wanna make sure your handbrake is down so that we can remove the rotor, otherwise it's not gonna come off. So the next step, we like to be a little bit more cleanliness. Uh, some people will skip this, but we like to use a little bit of brake pad cleaner and a wire brush just to get rid of some of that old rust that's been on there. I think this is the first time that she's changed her brakes that she's on the car. So there's a lot of rust. Plus being from Washington, it's always wet. So there's way too much rust. Now, this next step is kind of, you know, some do it, some don't. We're gonna be putting a little bit of anti-seize on the hub. This is the new rotor. It is in a gold zinc dimpled uh, and slotted finish and design. Shout out to our boys Keon over at Break Time USA for hooking us up with these rotors. Now let's go ahead and get them on. We wanna make sure we line up this security bolt hole to the security bolt hole on the hub. And that should be... Boom, oh, perfect. So the rotor's on. And the last step to solidify the rotor is we gotta take that security bolt that we took off that holds the rotor in place. I'm gonna put a dab of Loctite on it. I use blue, you should be using red, but I just got what was in store. So check this out you guys, 
This is an old brake pad that I just pulled out. It's about as thick as cardboard. This is the new brake pad that we're replacing it with. These are ceramic and just, I mean, just look at that. So this is the piston and it's a little bit too far out for me to get this side of the brake pads in. So I have to press it in. And because this is a single piston, it's as easy as just using vice grips to do it. But for some reason, these ones aren't working. So I need to get bigger ones to be able to press that all the way in. So we totally didn't record the clip of me putting in the new pads, but essentially once you get that new piston uh, compressed into its chute, I think that's what it's called, then you just go ahead and slide in the new pads into the slots where the old pads came out of. If you're having trouble getting those old pads out, a hammer or a screwdriver can be used to take them out. It's really not that hard. Then you start to assemble everything in the reverse order that you took it all off and you're pretty much good to go. Um, one thing that I do have to mention is once the car is back down on the ground, make sure you torque your lug nuts down because you don't want that wheel flying off.